Thank you very much for the invitation. And today I will give the presentation on the meta sensing, reconfigurable intelligent surface assisted RF sensing and localization. And uh, the full, uh, this is a uh, this is a one hour forty five minutes presentation. For more per three hour presentation, you can go to this website. And also, this is uh, our collaborator. And thank you very much. Okay, here is the outline. Uh, first, we have this uh, background about the 6G, and uh, then we go to the RS. Then we talk about the three different cases for the uh, RS aided RF sensing for the gesture recognition, posture recognition, shaping, and uh, localization. Finally, we talk about uh, the future directions. And uh, for 6G, okay, they have many kind of application like VR like Internet of Things, automatic uh, driving, automatic uh, uh, industrial IoT, industrial manufacturers, uh, smart home and e-health and so on for education. So uh, in order to achieve this kind of a new requirement, new applications for 6G, they have a different uh, requirement like the connectivity, efficiency, peak rate, security and latency. And uh, uh, in this talk, we are talking about sensing accuracy. And typically for sensing, okay, and uh, uh, there are some kind of a trade-off between the simplicity and the accuracy. For example, for Wi-Fi, RF sensing uh, is very cheap, but it requires many coordination to achieve the high accuracy. And on the other hand, a millimeter wave is very accuracy, but because of long side and the high cost, so they need a massive uh, deployment. So the cost is high. And uh, so this motivates us. So we, we need uh, some kind of new technology with a low cost, easy and flexible deployment, and also compatible with 6G in sensing, sensing and localization. That's the reason we have the RIS. Uh, reconfigurable meta surface, which is implemented by meta materials, cost is very low, and also it can control to to improve this kind of uh, 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 radio environment, and also provide this uh, high accuracy sensing, and uh, also sometimes it's called RS, sometimes it's called IRS. Okay, and uh, here we have the introduction for the meta material. And uh, naturally, okay, we have this, uh, uh, for natural material, they, they have the limited EM wave control uh, capability. And they have this uh, dielectric uh, permittivity and uh, magnetic conductivity. So for different material, they will uh, re reflect this EM wave differently through the reflection and the refraction. And uh, there's a limited uh, uh, probability of item arrangement of natural material that leads to the different uh, limited value of uh, the if solar and the mu. For example, here we have this uh, different material for the different uh, mu and the uh, if solar for this kind of thing. However, with the development uh, of meta materials, the EM is, can, can be controlled. So uh, meta material is an artificial service that can change this if solar and the mu. So it's widely used in optic and the microwave. And here is uh, some kind of literature for this, uh, I mean, history for this matter material. We start in uh, 1968, and in 1990s, and recently, there are many kind of new development over this uh, uh, timeline. And uh, especially recently, recently, okay, the matter material, uh, because the material, uh, the matter material has become uh, very practical, and then have attracted many attention from both academic and uh, the industry, like the NTT Docomo. So what is the RIS? It's a very thin meta surface composed by the uh, multiple layers. And uh, for the outer layer, they have this kind of uh, uh, 2D array of this RIS component. Each component is composed of this kind of PI, PI diode, and it can be controlled. In the middle layer, they have a copper, uh, copper layer to, uh, to prevent signal energy leakage. And then in the layer, they have the uh, control circuit to control this PN node, uh, PN node, the diode. And then by control this one, the reflection of this kind of signal can be, up, can be controlled in the desired direction. 
And uh, the advantage for the RS is a very low cost and programmable. And then it can reflect, impose a controllable phase shift. So the phase shift around here is controllable. And also the working range is very wide. So this is a huge advantage. And uh, the RS can work as a beamformer and the signal can be reflected and transmitted into the right direction and by control this on off this uh, uh, of the diode. And um, then it can, can be very cost efficient because it's analog beamforming. In other words, okay, I'm controlling the reflecting pattern of this one. I'm not, trying, I'm not decoding and then transmitting like the digital beamformer. So the cost will be low. And also it's energy efficiency because uh, uh, we only reflect the signal. And uh, so uh, we, we also collect the extra, extra energy at the receiver and there's no kind of uh, extra transmission in this kind of environment so that the interference is also good. So in mathematics, you can be controlled in this way. For gamma is this kind of reflection amplitude and uh, can be uh, zero and one on and off. And then theta is can be controlled at the fifth shape shift. In practice, okay, depending on the number of diode, okay, this kind of phase shift is a, instead of a continuous value, it can be a kind of a fixed uh, discrete value. But from our previous paper, we have proved that, okay, with uh, just a few, I mean, K to five probably, and then, okay, it's sufficient to assume this uh, theta is a, uh, is a continuous and the, the performance loss is a very, uh, relatively low, okay. And um, so basically, okay, we can control this, the, control the theta so that the input X will be reflected out as the output Y. This Y can help the receiver uh, in communication, it can help the receiver to increase the signal to noise ratio and then in, uh, in, in sensing, you can help this kind of sensing to have a better uh, performance. So that is the reason, okay. But uh, that is the reason the RIS has become one of the hottest topic recently. And for channel model, okay, uh, we typically using the rising model. model and uh, this RIS in the outdoor is typically on, on the side of the building so that, okay, it can reflect. And for the receiver, okay, sometimes you will have this kind, you, you may not di directly see this uh, base station. So in this case, okay, you will have the non-line of sight. And for indoor, okay, RIS can be on the ceiling so that everybody can have a line of sight through the reflection of this uh, uh, signal through the RIS to the access point. And even though in the middle, okay, there might be some kind of a, uh, a furniture or something to block the line of sight. So in this case, okay, we will have this uh, line of sight and the non line of sight component. And uh, then, okay, and uh, the kappa here is a balance between these two components, the energy. And um, this, uh, the, the path lost is a kind of a this lost and the time this lost. And then the, this is overall kind of a receive signal plus a noise. So this is a uh, channel model. And uh, specifically for indoor localization, and uh, um, we can uh, enhance the remote R sensing by custom radio environment. So in other words, okay, previously, okay, we have the signal bouncing to the human body and by RRS, it's just like a torch, I mean light torch. And then so they, they, they can change the direction of the beam to follow the uh, human. And so it's just like a torch to make this a human shining. And obviously the localization will be better. And uh, also so that it will in enable the high accuracy indoor human and uh, object localization and recognition. So that's the reason, you know, for example, this is RF and this, uh, this, uh, this person is illuminated so, so that the recognition will be further improved. And here is some kind of prototype and in this uh, EM clean room, and uh, we have this uh, transmitter, and uh, then we have the receiver and the control. This is the RIS component, and uh, here is a uh, uh, meta materials, and here is a photo and the control. So the working range is a 3.6 gig. Anyway, and so this is a kind of a background 
And now we talk about a three specific case for the poster generation, generation and the RS3D sensing and the localization. And uh, this talk is uh, concentrating on sensing. If you are uh, interested in this RIS uh, enhanced uh, communication, you can go to that website, my website, uh, to see the full version, which contain uh, information regarding the communication part. Here we talk about the sensing part specifically. And here is the background. We have RF sensing. The RF is everywhere, and we cannot avoid it. And um, uh, the principle is that, okay, the sensing target between the pair of transmitter and the receiver. So in, in the middle, okay, if there are some kind of uh, 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 people or something that uh, is uh, blocking the signal, then the RS will, will recognize this kind of changing so that they can try to de uh, decide where the location of this uh, person. So this is a working principle. So, and uh, there are many applications, for example, for security. And my advisor have this uh, Wi-Fi security so that, okay, a company. And so uh, you can use Wi-Fi instead of uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, window and the door, you, you, you have this, uh, all these kind of devices uh, put there. So you can just use Wi-Fi to do this kind of home protection. And then you have the smart space. And um, for example, this kind of, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, Xbox and the playing, and uh, you have safety. And this is very important for the senior person, especially in the United States, if they stay at home and alone, and when they are, they are falling, they cannot kind of uh, stand up and they cannot call for help. This is one, one of the major death, uh, death kind of a, a problem, a reason for the senior people. So this is also a kind of very, very important. And uh, here um, we have this kind of uh, uh, two, type, two different type technique. We have the active, uh, active method, which is a Wi-Fi sensing, millimeter wave sensing, so basically, <coughs> uh, basically, okay, they, you have to control this kind of uh, sensing and a uh, uh, millimeter wave and uh, uh, to, to do this kind of uh, 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 direction and so on. So this, this is active sensing. And here we do this kind of a passive sensing. So we still using this uh, Wi-Fi or this uh, traditional millimeter wave for their communication. But on the other hand, we have this kind of uh, RIS that can help. I mean, changing, we can actively changing the RIS so that, okay, the RIS will pointing the, uh, the signal to the desired uh, target. So here we are talking about passive method. And uh, similarity here, the RIS is this reflector. And by controlling this reflector direction so that, uh, for example, when we take photographer, and the sun comes from this side, and the face is okay, but the chin is dark. So this result can, can be controlled by the Wi-Fi or millimeter wave because they are located, I mean, the transmitter receiver location. But by using the RIS, like this reflector, we can reflect the signal to the chin side so that, uh, I mean, the photographer looks good. So this is a kind of similarity here. And here with the goal is try to uh, implement a practical RIS RF sensing system for human and uh, object location and recognition. So we have the uh, challenge is that we have practical sensing protocol. So we wanted a real implementation inside of a kind of, a, uh, I mean, a theoretical algorithm thing. We search for the optimal phase shift and uh, also propose an efficient uh, algorithm. So in the next few, I mean, three examples, we show how could we implement that way. So the first one is the uh, RIS, the I mean poster sensing. So this one is for this uh, I mean falling detection for the senior people. Okay, and um, here uh, for RIS motivation for the RIS sensing uh, based sensing system, we can RIS can control the wireless environment to provide the favorable uh, wireless environment for RF sensing. And uh, here. Uh, we try to find the human poster. If a senior person walking around, that's no problem. If he or she falling down, 
then we design this kind of, uh, detect this poster through this kind of sensing system and uh, then try to give the warning. And if the senior person reply, oh, this is a false alarm, that's not a problem. But uh, if the senior person does not re reply, we may call the medical doctor or the police in case uh, the senior person got, uh, cannot move. So in this case, we can save the life. So this is a basic motivation for that. And here we have the challenge. And how does this kind of RIS control the virus environment? And uh, then we, ha we try to ha have to control the discrete phase shift of the massive number of RSU element. So this is a kind of, uh, I mean, uh, control, is a, control is a very complex. And uh, also, how could, we uh, how could the RIS start the human posture? So with a receive signal, then how could we do this, um, I mean, decide whether or not uh, the, uh, the senior person is standing, working, or lying down? And uh, so this is a, uh, this is a, we resolve this one, to, we resolve both of them through this machine learning. And also moreover, to make the problem even worse, these two problems are coupled together. So how could we decouple them and then give the efficient algorithm? So here we have the uh, model description. We have the transmitter, antenna, receiver one, and uh, then we have a human and the RIS, so basically transmitter, receiver, just like regular Wi-Fi. And then we have RIS. And then, okay, the RIS is controlled by the machine learning smart algorithm so that it can reflect the signal to, the, to follow the human. And then, okay, in case, and then decide whether or not this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, person's kind of a uh, poster. So just in case anything happens. And here we have the periodical configuration protocol. So we uh, reconfigure the, the period, we contain K frame, and uh, during which we, we assume this human poster is fixed. And that's, that's okay because uh, each frame is fast. And the receive signal during the recognition are used for the, uh, for, uh, during, are used for recognition. And for the frame configuration, we have the different state corresponding to the different phase shift, and uh, each group, each group element sequentially changes state. So basically, screen this kind of a uh, uh, different situation and uh, di uh, di different places, and uh, then consists of the, the duration at each group play with an un 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 different state. So the duration for each group is an un different state, and then okay, the decision, the the receiver use the decision function to generate the probability of the different uh, uh, human poster. And uh, then this is a probability of the human poster one, and this is the cost of, uh, of poster and so on. So basically this is a kind of, uh, I mean, here this is a cost. The cost will be okay if I make the right decision, it's okay. How about I make the false alarm? And the senior person kind of uh, uh, standing and saying that, okay, he's falling down. So what, what is the false alarm cost, uh, cost? And this is a kind of annoying. Yeah, but uh, well, yeah, it's a cost. On the other hand, okay, if the people, uh, the senior person I mean, lie down and then the algorithm didn't detect it, then there's another cost, right? So basically, how can you define this cost? And then we try to minimize this uh, uh, overall cost function with uh, two things. First one about the frame configuration. So, uh, so in the previous slide, we are screening this kind of um, uh, kind of frame, okay. And then, okay, this is a T. It, uh, and then we have a decision function. So the decision function L basically, okay, after getting this information, how could we use the machine learning to detect, uh, to decide, okay, which, which gesture or we, uh, which uh, posture this human, uh, this person is. So this is a coupled problem. And then we decouple these two problem into uh, these two part. One part is, uh, so we changing like a coordinate descendant, uh, um, descendant method. We changing this kind of uh, RS frame one, and then we go to this kind of uh, um, decision function and then do it iteratively. And uh, for this uh, uh, frame configuration, when we change T, okay, when we change this T, okay. And uh, here is a measurement uh, matrix, and then it's uh, related to the frame duration, and then this is a channel. 
And here, okay, we try to minimize the mutual coherent by using this function. So basically, okay, we try to, I mean, the, the design rule is try to minimize the uh, mutual coherent of T uh, so that, okay, the each iteration, the search and uh, uh, the search one is uh, uh, try to find, uh, try to optimize this, uh, this function, okay. And uh, for when, the, when we do this uh, decision one, decision one, and uh, we try to utilize this kind of uh, 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 machine learning part. And this machine learning part, okay, this is a kind of a frame. And uh, then we try to change this kind of, uh, I mean, learning part. Learning part, we, we have training side, and then we try to minimize the false alarm and missing other probability by this, uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, neural network. This theta is basically the parameter of the neural network. And here is a call function for this kind of uh, uh, decided pre, uh, two, two slides before. And here is uh, some kind of uh, setup and uh, for our real implementation. And here we also use this kind of uh, uh, USRP to, uh, to, to send the signal to either regular signal and also control the RS. And here uh, is an example experiment result. Here is this kind of, uh, I mean, this is a frame. This is a frame and um, uh, this is a frame of the I mean, screening, screening. And then here we try to have the screening of the, of the screen, uh, try to do the optimizing over this T. And after the optimization, we found out that, okay, uh, we have this kind of a mutual coherent uh, uh, reduction from uh, point three, uh, po uh, 0.36 to point zero point two two. So in other words, a new kind of uh, frame screening is better to have a better performance. And then combined with the two algorithm, we show that, okay, the, the proposed method compared with the random method and the result RS, this kind of uh, error trip Error, error probability is much smaller and the detection probability is much higher. So here is a, for the different, uh, uh, different kind of uh, uh, position, like the standing, bending, sitting, and the uh, lying down. And then this is the correct detection and then this is incorrect detection. And compared with the other algorithm, all performance is better. So this is the first one and uh, about the different gesture, different gesture and a poster, okay. And uh, the second one is about uh, by using RS, can I see the, uh, can I see the object? You know, I mean, for what type of shape it has? So this is the second part. And uh, we use this uh, RF 3D sensing, shaping 3D sensing for optics, uh, the complete information about 3D object is hard to acquire due to the blocking themselves. For RF can detect this object, so basically, okay, we can see behind the uh, behind uh, behind of the object. I mean, uh, behind of the object, yeah. And the RS control this uh, uh, RF sensing beam to the multiple configuration, and we can control for that. And the challenge is how to uh, optimize RS configuration to conf to create favorable propagation channel, and how to obtain the mapping from the RF to have the 3D shape of the obstacle. And here we have the system description. We also have a direct antenna as a transmitter and the receiver, and we have RIS, and also we have a sensing object. And uh, then, okay, the channel model is a target space is discretized into this kind of a uh, undefined grid. And uh, then, okay, so we have a total undefined component. And so basically this meta surface will point out this kind of a path into the specific uh, M block in the space. And so that, okay. And uh, there's an N kind of element. And uh, by control those one, we try to see, okay, where this object is located and what is the shape. And here we have the RF sensing protocol. We have a synchronization uh, phase, uh, synchronization of the uh, TX transmission, the RS configuration change and uh, basically try to synchronize, okay, the, the, the whole system, tune up. And then calibration, so basically, okay, uh, 
to to face is to subtract the environment scattering. Okay, and uh, then we have the data collection phase. So I change to the point to the different location, and uh, then okay, try to uh, then the data data is collected, and then finally we have the data processing one to have the decision function to decide where this uh, uh, where this kind of object, what's the shape of this object, and uh, here. We have the problem formulation. We use a cross entropy, and uh, so basically, this one is a right. If this a uh, if this uh, object is located at that uh, uh, that location, and uh, then what is the cost? And this is a not. If this is not located, we sh I should say no. Okay, it's not located there. So this is a uh, the cost of a, uh, is located there. This is a cost that if the object is not located there, I don't want to claim it's located there. So here is the optimization. And then we try to uh, optimize under the two things. The first thing is the control, this RS control. Second thing is the mapping. There's a function FW, which is a mapping from this kind of receive signal into this localization. And here again, we try to decouple the problem because these two problems is coupled, decoupled. With a fixed FW, we try to control for this uh, uh, control for the beam uh, for the analog beam forming for the RIS. And here we use a deep reinforcement learning try to have the uh, uh, trial trial uh, for the different location. On the other hand, with a fixed of the RIS uh, uh, pattern. And then we try to do this uh, uh, mapping function. And here we use a supervised, uh, supervised learning for this deep learning. And uh, here, here for the RIS, and uh, we try to use the MDP. And here is a different state. And then, OK, we define the state action, transition, and the reward. And then we have the policy pi and uh, try to improve this performance. And all this one will be I mean, changed. And also, this one will coupled with this kind of FW for this uh, for this mapping part. So this is a, a machine uh, 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 this is, is a reinforcement learning part and we also need to couple the, with the supervised learning part. And then so overall this is algorithm design. And here is this kind of example and then we have this uh, strange shape, 3D shape and then okay and it is XYZ location. And here, uh, with a different uh, number of training, and uh, we can see that, okay, we can see this object clearly and clearly. And then compared with the literature, we uh, our, our, our proposed solution have a much low, much higher accuracy. So basically, in other words, by using the RF, we can see the object in the room, even though that we cannot have a line of sight with the optical, we can still use the RF to see what the shape it is, okay. So, that is the second part. And the third part is this a uh, real localization and uh, where is it located? So typically for RF localization, and uh, they have a different applica uh, application, the category, they can use this uh, uh, receive signal strength and the channel state, angle of arrival, time of arrival, and so on. And uh, the advantage is the simpli uh, simplicity of the major RS uh, and hardware requ requirement. And uh, and uh, then uh, for RSS, the, the principle is user location are obtained by comparing the measurement of RSS and the stored in RSS uh, distribution in the indoor environment. However, for indoor RSS one, due to the multi-pass, due to the object, typically the localization is not that accurate. However, by using the RSS, we can we can change the the path of this RF signal so that we can illuminate the desired direction, uh, the desired area, so that, okay, the localization will be much more accurate. So that is motivation. And the traditional method is that, okay, cannot be customized, just in case there are some kind of dark area. And uh, for example, I'm behind of uh, several metal, uh, metal bookshelf, and maybe my signal is just poor. So you cannot locate me. And uh, however, by just using RIS, the signal can be changed to that direction, or can be pointed to that direction. And um, there are challenge, large number, complicated uh, coupled uh, relation. 
So those are similar to the previous two cases. And here we have this uh, system model. Again, we have the regular kind of a, uh, regular wireless transmitter receiver. And then, okay, for the RS is pointing to the location to, to localize the people. And here we have the concept of space of interest so that, okay, the people will, uh, will, will locate in the area. And this is the RS model. Okay, this is a phase change. And uh, here we have RS model, we have a direct line of sight and then reflection. And this reflection have this uh, uh, definition for the uh, wavelength, power gain, distance, and so on. And uh, then the, the overall received signal, RSS, can be represented in this way, in this way, okay. And here we have uh, this uh, position protocol, we try to optimize, we have several steps and uh, we have optimized the uh, access point, select the optimal configuration and uh, for the RIS. And then we try to broadcast the access broadcast is one to the, and the RIS. The RIS will try to select this kind of configuration and then try to do the measurement and then try to collect the response. So basically, okay, this is a, a protocol design. And uh, try to, we try to minimize the average positioning cost so again, okay, this is a kind of a, uh, this is a basing cost uh, in a continuous case. Okay, so basically this is a overall cost that we want to have. And um, here we have this implementation and uh, the size of RIS, and this is the area. And uh, so this is a 3D area, okay. But uh, for even though I'm flying, okay, I'm jumping, like they try to low, uh, low, uh, try to, locate me, okay. And here we show this a number of cycle for position error. And uh, then, okay, you can see that, okay, it's achieved this kind of centimeter, centimeter level. And uh, also, okay, this is a position error. And uh, uh, this is standard deviation for this re uh, receive signal. Uh, if it's too noisy and it will go out. So, okay, so this is a, a case. And uh, for future potential direction, we have the, uh, we can have the high resolution sensing for mobile and Doppler resolution. We can also add the angle of resolution and non-uniform illumination. And um, for simultaneous localization and mapping. So we try to have time variant state and object, which is unknown, and the move of object on slow time scale. This is a very important for, for this kind of, uh, uh, automatic driving. And there are some kind of other issue like the context awareness, security and the privacy and so on. Physical layer security, for example. And the here we have the conclusion. The RS is a promising paradigm for the future wireless sensing application. And uh, basically you can control and customize this kind of direction of reflection. And so that you can provide a very accurate localization and sensing for, the, for this one. And here is the example, this uh, famous uh, scene of the Bruce Lee. And uh, basically they have the mirror. And uh, this mirror is, uh, you can see that if the mirror is not control, controllable, then it's just like the reflector. And then in this case, the localization is uh, very, very bad. You can see Bruce Lee is very confused. However, if this mirror can be controlled, I can control the direction to the, to the desired people that I want or desired uh, target that I want to locate then obviously it can help the Bruce Lee to localize this uh, enemy in a very efficient way. So this is uh, basically what RS can do. And here we, so we have a lot of work on the communication and here for this uh, sensing, we talk about the posture, 3D shaping and the position. And uh, here we have uh, one book just published and uh, here we have the other publication for that. And finally, let me uh, have an advertisement for our lab and uh, uh, after uh, after uh, pandemic, and welcome to our lab. And uh, excited for study, we do everything else. So, and Houston is also a very uh, cheap and friendly place. And uh, I hope that, okay, uh, we can work together and enjoy life together. And finally, thank you very much. Any questions?